So we're in this topic of polynomials, and for a lot of us, this is kind of like, oh yeah, a lot of stuff that we have known over the past few years is actually coming together. Like when we had a first look at graphing, you're like, oh, this connects, this connects to calculus, this connects to our algebra that we were doing before, this connects to all the functions that we did right at the start of the year. So we're kind of continuing that theme, we're going to take some of the knowledge that we've had before and use it to prove, verify, and then sort of extend this interesting relationship. And we'll get a little bit later on to why this relationship is interesting. For now, we're going to use this as our uh, example to consider, which will help us show what this relationship is. And then what we're going to do, as mathematicians often do, is we'll go from a specific example and we'll see if we can do what we call generalizing. Good morning, come on in, there's plenty of seats right there. When you have a look at it, I haven't told you to do anything with it, but does anyone have any instincts for what we could do with it to maybe help us work with it? Keeping in mind, you don't know what I've asked, I'm asking you to do with it yet, but what could we perhaps do? Yeah, we could factorize this thing, absolutely. Before we start thinking about like how we're going to write this with some brackets and all that kind of thing, is there anything simple we can do? Oh, sorry, that, that number on the end should be an 8. That's an 8. Is there anything simple we can do to make that factorization a bit simpler? Rasen? Yeah, I, each one of these numbers, that's why I noticed my number was wrong. Each one of, these, one of these numbers is a multiple of 3, so I can just factor that out. Let's do that. So I'm going to write out the front a 3, and what does that leave me with on the inside of the brackets? Okay, I got an x squared. Someone take over, what's next? Someone just walked in, you can see this. Tell me what's, what's next. Come on, you guys can all see this, what's my next term? Plus uh, I am going to have an x, but how many of them after I take out the 3? Five of them, right? Very good. And then last term along the constant one, plus 6, right? Okay, happy times. So we've taken out a common factor, and now when you have a look at this thing, you can see why I chose these numbers. These are really easy to deal with, right? We're searching for a pair of numbers, add to that, multiply to that. And those two numbers, of course, are? Ah, interesting. So I am going to write, eventually, minus 2 and minus 3. But those are not the factorization. You're actually going to the next step, um, Serang. When I'm just doing the factorization, I'm not minus 2 and minus 3. The numbers I want are? Plus 2, plus 3, right? I'm going to write my factorization like so. And the minus 2, minus 3, where they come in are, they are, as the heading suggests to you, they're what we call the zeros of this polynomial. This is our polynomial, p of x. Why do you think zeros, remember, we've talked about this language before, why do we call them zeros, minus 2 and minus 3? What happens with them? Yeah. They're, they are the x-intercepts. We've talked about x-intercepts, we've talked about roots, and we've talked about zeros. I want you to look again at the word. Zeros. It's a bit weird to say negative 2 is a zero of this, but why would that actually be a sensible name, Rasen? They make the whole thing zero. They make the whole thing zero. Please mark that, right? Let's actually write that down. I'm going to put it in a different color just to highlight it, right? I'm going to say x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3 are zeros of this polynomial, right? They are zeros of p of x because if we took negative 2 and negative 3 and substituted them in, p of negative 2, p of negative 3, then you get 0 out of this. That's why we call them that, okay? Now, these two numbers here, negative 2 and negative 3, I wonder if you can see there is a relationship between these two that you can get straight out of here without doing any of this factorization. Let me see if I can tease it out for you a little more. Let's give these two, x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3, let's give them names. Right? Let's call this guy over here alpha, and we'll call this guy over here beta. These are my two zeros. I'm going to ask you to do two things with them. Number one, we're going to add them up, see what we get, see if there's anything interesting. Then we're going to multiply them, see if we get anything interesting. Okay, so to add them, the way I would write that, the sum of these two roots, I would write that as alpha plus beta, right? There we go. When you take our particular values, alpha and beta, negative 2, negative 3, you add them together, we get, of course, negative 5. Okay, let's just hit pause on that guy. And then the other thing I wanted to do was multiply them together. That's not a sum. What hap what's, the, what's the answer called when you multiply two things together? It's a product, right? It's a product. That's what happens when you multiply two things together. So I would write that as not alpha plus beta, but alpha times beta. I'm just going to leave out the times. What do you get? What's the answer? It's 6, right? 
Okay, now I wonder if you notice there is a clear relationship between these two numbers that you've gotten out here and our original, the first line of this, our polynomial, right? Uh, and there's relationships all the way through. There's a relationship from these guys to here and also these guys to here. Let's start with this line. It's a bit easier to see. Where do you see 6? Like, where do you see it? It's just the constant terms, just right there, isn't it, right? There's 6. Where's negative 5? That's a little trickier to see, because it's negative. Maybe I should ask, where this, where's this guy? Where's the 5? We have language for this, right? It's the coefficient of x. Thank you, right? It's that guy right there. So where do we see this? It's the negative of the coefficient of x, right? Hmm. But to get to this line, what we had to do first was we had to factorize out. Do you see that? We had to take out this factor. It was, went all the way through. Okay? So in fact, how can we get 6 and negative 5 just out of this very first line? Well, this is an appropriate call. We're going to take that thing right down the end. When we look at this quadratic, we would normally write it as this, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the general form. You can describe any quadratic you like in this way. right? We took this last number, and then to get to 6, to factorize out, I, well, I divided, didn't I? I divided by whatever this coefficient at the front was, right? So I took c, and then I divided by this coefficient at the front, a. Are you happy with that? Do you see that that's where I could get 6 without having to factorize? I could go straight to this value if I was so interested in it. Is that all right? When you have a look at this one, I didn't look at that last term. I looked at the middle one, the coefficient of x. So that's not c, that's, that's b. That's what we call it, right? The coefficient of x right there. It's b. I factorized out. So again, just like here, I divided through by a. But then there was one last thing. You're like, oh, you don't get negative 5 here. You just get positive 5. So it's not quite b on a. It's the opposite of that. It's the negative version. So I'm just going to write a minus sign at the front. Does that make sense? Look back at the first line, just kind of mentally blank out all of this. If I asked you to find out what the sum of the roots was, we wouldn't have to go through all of this process. We could get it straight from this line. I could say minus b, minus 15, divide that by 3, and you'd get the negative 5. Okay? So if I have a look at these two here, these are kind of like a shortcut to get straight to the sum of the two roots and the product of the two roots without having to go through this factorization process. Okay? Now, 